For us to hold all of these multiple lines, we need to create some sort of a container which will actually be able to handle all of that functions. So first we want to actually create a player HUD, like a generic player HUD, and then put the container on the player HUD rather than having to add it to an existing widget. So in our content drawer, let's go to our core UI, and I'm going to right click and create a new in user interface, widget blueprint, user widget, named as W underscore player HUD. Save it. And then now let's go to our third person and add this player HUD. Go to our blueprints, third person character, find an empty spot or find where you have your event begin play. And here we're going to go ahead and say create widget. And this would be our player HUD. Now let's get a reference to this player HUD because we need to add and remove more stuff from this player HUD. So let's go ahead and promote this to a variable and name this W underscore player HUD underscore reference. And this we're going to go ahead and add to viewport. Now back in our UI folder, we're going to right click and create a new user interface, widget blueprint, user widget. And this will be W underscore event feed underscore container. This container is going to be pretty straightforward. Inside of this container, we're going to have a size box. And the size box, let's make it something like um, 350 by 500. Again, you can make it bigger or smaller based on uh, how, you, how you see it in the game. And inside of this, we want to have a wrap box. Let's name this wrap box as our line underscore container. Make this a variable. And also the inner slot padding on the Y axis, I'm gonna add like two padding. So in between each and every single line, there's a small amount of gap. Now let's go ahead and center everything inside of this wrap box and then compile and save. Let's open up our player HUD and add in a canvas panel. And in this canvas panel, we're going to add in our event feed container. And I'm going to go ahead and position this somewhere. Uh, let's actually do it over on the side and make it nice and big, just like this. Compile and save again. You can change it, move it wherever you would like. Uh, if you want it on the bottom, you will just move this box to the bottom. If you want it on the top, you can move it there. That's why we added a canvas panel. So it allows for the widgets inside of it to be freely moved around anywhere you like. Make sure you set up your anchors properly. Once this is done, now we can start creating our functions for our container. The logic will be our backpack will communicate to the HUD and the player HUD will then communicate to the event container. So in our player HUD, I'm gonna to go to the graph here and I'm gonna create a new custom event. This would be add feed line to container. And this is going to get taken input. This would be our feed line, which is our line widget. So it would be w underscore event feed line. Compile and save. Now we want to add this to our container. So in our container, I'm going to go open up the graph. And I want the container to have its own little inventory system and inventory of all of the widgets that we are creating. And then as the time goes by, it will delete and you know recreate widgets and such. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable. And this would be feed line underscore array. Make this of type feed line, the event feed line widget. And then also make this of type array. Compile and save. And here we're going to create a new custom event. And this custom event is going to say update. We're going to name this update container data. And this update container data is going to have an input. And this would be our feed line. This is the widget that, we, that we're going to create, the line widget. So let's make this the event feed line. Now, every time this update container data is called, we want to drag, we want to get our array and we want to check to see if that widget of that line 
that we just picked up from the ground? Does it already exist in our screen or in our widget array here? So we can do that by doing a contains item check and connect this feed line to this just like this. And then do a branch. Connect the branch execution as such, and then the Boolean from the contains over here. Now it's going to tell us, yes, we already have this widget on the screen or in our array, or the widget's not in our array. Now, if it is not in our array, it's very simple. We just drag our feed line array and then do a add unique. And then drag this feed line right into it. So if it is not there already, add it to our array. Very simple. Good. If it is already there, then we're going to go ahead, get our feed line array again, and we're going to go ahead and find that item. Find it just like this. And then we're going to get our feed line array one more time. And we're going to set array element. This will be connected off of true. The index would be where we found it. And then the item itself would be this feed line item. Just like so. And now once we're done this, we want to go ahead and every time we update the container data, we want to refresh, refresh the container. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do add a new custom event. And this would be refresh. I'm going to name this as refresh container. And here I'm going to go ahead and get our actual line container, not the array, just the container. This is our uh, wrap, wrap, wrap box that's going to hold all of the actual widgets. And we're going to first clear it. So clear all the children. And then get our feed line array. And we're going to do a for each loop for each and every single item that is inside of this array. We want to go ahead and drag our line container in again and add child to the wrap box and then add this element as the content and connect this to the loop body. So this clears out everything that's already on the screen and then checks for all the new items that is in our array and then recreates that items on the screen one more time. So this is how we're going to refresh our box. Now let's go to our player HUD widget. And then now we're going to go ahead and call it because we already in our in our player HUD, we already added this event feed container. We get a variable for that event feed container, which is basically this um, widget blueprint itself. So I'm going to drag it, do a get. And off of this, I'm going to say update container data. Connect this as such and then feed line. Compile and save it. Now let's go ahead and do our backpack functionality before we come back to this. So in our content drawer, let's go to our backpack system folder, open up our BPC backpack. Currently we're creating the widget and then we're adding the viewport directly from this BPC backpack. This is no longer going to work if you want to have a multi feed line, because when you have multiple lines of different items or items that shares the same parent, you want to be very specific with each and every single one of them and communicate with each and every single one of them individually. If not, you're going to send out a mass message, which will update every single widget at the same time. So let's go ahead and make that functionality. First, we want to get a reference to the player HUD that we just created, because the player HUD is the one that's going to control adding the widget to the container. The easiest way to get a reference to the player HUD without casting is in our BPC backpack, create a new variable, and this would be our player HUD underscore reference and make this of type w underscore player HUD. Again, this alone is not going to get you the reference. We need to set it properly. So in our third person character, once we set up our add to viewport uh, of the player HUD, we're going to drag our BPC backpack and then we're going to do a set player HUD. Just like so, and then we're going to drag our player reference and then we're going to plug it in here. Now it properly sets the reference of the player HUD inside of the backpack without having to cast. So first thing that we're going to do is wherever we are creating the event feed line, instead of adding to viewport, we're going to add it to our player HUD. So to do that, let's go ahead and delete this active viewport here. And then now we need to get a reference to this specific event that we're creating or this feed line that we're creating. So drag off this return value and promote it to a variable. Set this to feed line underscore reference. And now we're going to drag in our player HUD reference. And in our player HUD, we have this add feed line to container function. This is what we're going to call. So drag off of this player HUD reference and say add feed line to container, this function right here. 
plug the scene in here as such, and then wherever you got the set, you're going to drag in, plug it in here, and then set the return node. I'm going to copy this whole thing again here, and then at the bottom where we are setting up our widget here, uh, I'm going to get rid of this active viewport and the return node, and then paste it, and then plug it in here as such. Just like so. So now we're using our player HUD to add the feed line to our screen rather than having our backpack add the item to our screen. So the next thing that we want to do is we're checking to see if the event feed line is empty or not. Now, every single widget that's going to be in our screen is going to be event feed line. So this is what I meant by mass update. So this will go and check even if it is a can of, can of beans is on the screen, this is going to come back as true while we're looking at the weapon. So we no longer want to call it generically to the event feed line. So I'm going to get, I'm going to delete this widget of class. I'm going to delete is empty. And also I'm going to delete the branch. Instead, I'm going to drag our feed line reference and do a get. This is basically going to give us specifically this uh, feed line that we just created. And then we're going to right click and then always do a validated get. This makes sure if this feed line for any reason doesn't exist in your world or in your screen, we're not going to get an error. So connect this off of true. And we're going to say if it is valid, then we're going to go ahead and do this update function. So let's go ahead and connect this to this add pickup count. If it is not valid, then we're going to go ahead and create a new one. It's a very small change that we're making. And additionally, um, getting all widgets of interface with BPI UI. Again, this is another mass update that we're doing, which we no longer want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this get all widgets with interface. And because we already have a reference to our feed line, now I can use this as my target. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this directly into the target, or I could always drag this and then plug it in here, the same thing, and then connect this add. Compile and save. And we also want to update our container because just updating the feed line is not going to update the container. So we want to send a message to the container. So let's use our interface to send a message. So in your interfaces where you have BPI UI, open up your BPI UI. And then here we're going to do an add and do a new function. And this would be update feed line quantity. And this would have an input of type feed line. Again, this would be our event feed line uh, widget. This is the same widget that we have created previously. And then now in our backpack, so we're going to drag our feed line reference here, get feed line reference. We're going to do this after we update the quantity. And here off of this, we're going to drag and say update feed line quantity, get that message, plug it in here. Now the target is the feed line quantity reference and the feed line itself is the same. They're both the same things. And you can plug it in just like this. And now in our event feed container, we need to now implement this function. So let's go to our event feed container, go to our class settings, implemented interfaces. We're going to go ahead and add our BPI UI. And now we will get our interfaces here. So at the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and implement this update feed line quantity. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag our line array again, and I'm going to say, find. So this will go and find this feed line item. And we're also going to drag this array one more time. And we're going to say set array element. Connect it here and connect the index as such and also the feed line item just like so. And then we're going to go ahead and refresh our container. So here we're going to go ahead and say refresh container. This will go ahead and refresh our line items in our visuals. And the last thing that we need to do is in our update container, after we set up our array element item or add unique, we also want to go ahead and refresh our container. So I'm going to go ahead and search for refresh, refresh container. And after we set up the array element, we want to plug this in here. And also if we add unique, we also want to refresh our container. So if I go ahead and press play, you will see that I can press F and then the item gets picked up. And if I press F again, again, and again, it's going to keep collecting. And then if I stop for a second, it should disappear from the screen. Now, if I press F again, it's going to start a new line and then update it. And you would see that the first line is still there and then it created a new line and so on and so forth. 
Um, that's because we haven't really created a remove from the container function, because this is just going to keep adding the stuff to the container again and again. We don't really have a remove function. So let's go ahead and create that. In our BPI UI, let's create a new interface function. And this would be remove feed from container. And remove feed container, again, we need to specify which feed line that we're actually going to be removing. So I'm going to set in a feed line and also set that to event feed line type, compile and save. In our event feed line container, we're going to right click and then implement event remove feed from container. And first, we're going to drag in our feed line array and we're going to find that item. And then we're going to drag in our feed line array one more time. And I'm going to say remove index. And then connect this to the execution pin. Let me bring this down. And then this index that we just found is the one that we're going to go ahead and remove. And then once that is done, we're going to go ahead and refresh the container. So this is our remove from the container function. Let's compile and save it. And we need to call this function. Uh, we don't want to call it from the BPC backpack. We want to call it from the actual uh, widget itself. So we're going to go and open up our event feed line um, and then go to our graph. And where you, we have our set timer by event and our destroy event feed line here, before we remove it from the parent, I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for get all widgets with interface. And this would be our BPI UI interface. Plug this in here. I want to use this to remove the feed from the container. Um, I can get it off of this array. So off of this get player character, I'm going to search for remove feed, remove feed from container. And this I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it here. And then connect it to found widgets as the target. And for the feed line, I'm going to get a reference to self. So this was this will make it very specific. And after this, I'm going to go ahead and set this to remove from parent. So now this will fire off the remove from feed container function here. So let's go ahead and save everything and then let's try it one more time. So I'm going to go press play and I'll press F, F, here we go. And then I pick up four of them and I wait for a second. It'll disappear from the screen. Now if I press F, you see a completely new line get started. Now let's go ahead and test it with multiple items. So I'm going to create a pistol. Uh, in our weapon system folder, blueprints, off of our BP weapon base, I'm going to right click and then create a new child class. And this would be BP underscore pistol. And open this up. And in our event graph, I'm going to say get data table row. And this would be off of our weapons. And I'm going to select the pistol. And I'm going to drag this weapons info and set this to row found and then connect it here. And also set our skeletal mesh to the BLK 5018 uh, pistol model. And the collision, I'm gonna increase it to like 40, just to make it a little bit bigger. Compile and save it. Now I can uh, go ahead and drag our pistol into the game, just like so. Put it side by side. Now let's go ahead and test it. I head over to my weapon, I'll be able to pick up multiple of it. And when I stop picking up for a little bit, it should disappear. And now when I try again, it just start from the beginning. Same thing for the pistol. If I now pick up a pistol, you should see how it creates a completely new line for it. And my inventory is full. All right, folks, I think that's a good stop for us here. In our next video, we're going to take a look at creating the items and pick up for the items as well. So that's going to be a good one. And I'll catch you on the next one.